Hey guys, Bowler here. In today's video, I want to go over the 10 types of SSF2 players. Also, this is in no particular order, and I thought it'd make for a nice, fun video that you guys might enjoy. Now, these are also sort of player stereotypes, and they won't apply to everyone, and that's sort of the point of stereotypes. They aren't supposed to be taken 100% seriously, and it's more of just a fun little video I wanted to do. So, these are the 10 types of SF2 players I've encountered. Our first player is the Jack of All Characters, similar to the Jack of All Trades but Master of None. As the name would imply, these are the type of guys who don't really have any one character they consider their main, but instead, they're fairly good at the entire cast. These guys usually have really good fundamentals in Smash, and can pick up a new character fairly well and do really good with them right off the bat. Because of this, they tend to just rotate between characters they feel like playing, and it gives them that really good unknown factor in tournaments since you really don't know who they're going to end up pulling out. These players also tend to be very good at counterpicking and always have a character ready for the occasion. A good example of one of these players would be Anti in Smash 4, who usually counterpicks ZSS or Charizard if needed. And even if these players do end up finding a main, they usually tend to either drop them or find a new character they want to play more in a few weeks. This is a fairly common one, and even I'm guilty of this sometimes, especially when I first start playing a new platform fighter. The second type of player I want to talk about is the Character Specialist, which is basically the exact opposite of the Jack of All Characters. He has one character he's dedicated to and is incredibly good at, but is significantly worse when you play any other character. They spend all this time devoted to practicing and learning this one character to the point where their skills and abilities with the others just isn't nearly up to par with their main. They usually know every small detail about their character and have mastered all the advanced texts, gimmicks, or secrets with their character. These are the guys you think of when you're thinking of notable mains for a character. You'll see them driving the metagame in tournaments and getting really good results. They also have a very hard time switching mains, because whenever they want to try and switch mains, they usually do way worse and end up going right back to their main. A good example of this would be Hungrybox, who's really really good at Jigglypuff and a few other characters, but the difference between his Jigglypuff and his next best is a huge gap, making him a character specialist. Our third player on this list is what I call the Salt Mine. We've all encountered this player, and some of you watching this might even be this guy sometimes. The Salt Mine is the guy who gets a little too upset after a loss and takes out his anger by either flaming his opponent or constantly complaining. These guys tend to be extremely competitive and a lot more common in tournaments or where there's something at stake rather than just a friendly match. They aren't necessarily bad people, but they let their salt and anger take control of them after a loss, and it makes them a lot more annoying. It's normal to be upset over a loss, and it's a pretty common thing in competitive games, but you have to be mature enough to not start insulting your opponent or going on long rants after a loss. My best advice is that if you're salty after a loss, take 10 minutes to let the salt dissipate, and then go back to playing. If you keep playing after you're salty, you're just going to get even more angry. These are also usually the people who put their tags or room names as insults when you're playing online lobbies, and will usually blame lag or spam when they lose. The fourth player we have is the 9B Veteran, an old school SF2 player who's been playing competitive since at least 0.9B. These guys are usually really experienced old school players who have been playing for at least a few years, and often talk about old school 9B players and tournaments. These guys are usually the people you want to look out for online, since they have a lot of game sense and a lot of experience from 9B. Also, more often than not, they're a lot better at implementing dash cancelling than a brand new player. They're either still fairly active in the community, or they're extremely inactive ever since beta's release, but generally you'll see these guys at larger tournaments placing fairly well, or placing way worse ever since beta's release. There's also a smaller section of these players who always talk about how great 0.9b is, and I do agree 9b was a great game, although these guys tend to be the same guys who complained about 0.9b back when they played that. Moving on to number 5, we have the Melee fan, and as the name would imply, these guys are really into Melee, and either watch it a lot or have played it before SF2. Now don't get me wrong, Melee is a great game and I love it myself, but these guys I'm talking about are people who take it a little too far. These guys often try and imitate Melee players such as Hungrybox's Jigglypuff or Mewtwo King's Black Marth, and often make references to the Smash Bros documentary, such as making up the 5 gods of SSF2. He also almost certainly plays a flashy or combo heavy character such as Melee Falcon or Falco or even Fox, and try and be super technical whenever possible. Although I will admit, these players do use advanced tech to their full potential, and really get the most out of shield drops and dash cancels in SF2. At number 6, we have the Party House. He's the guy who just wants to have some fun, and isn't really worried about winning or losing, or really being competitive. He'll pick stages that aren't necessarily tournament legal, or he'll put some items on, just to have some fun. And he's always down for a good free-for-all. He might not be considered one of the best of the game, but he's a chill dude who just wants to have some fun. Although you really want to see these guys entering tournaments, or really being that active in the competitive community since they tend to get a pretty bad rep from playing the game in a different way. The seventh player on this list is the Combo Video. This is the guy who every match, no matter if they're in tournament, last talk, or in a friendly, will always try and go for the stylish kill. He's always trying to get clips for his combo video, and you'll almost always see him in community combo videos just destroying people. He'll get Falcon Punches, Mark Tipper Break Shields, 6 Suicide Spikes, he'll go for Game & Watch 9s even if they lead to him dying. 
No matter the situation, they will always go for a spike, even if missing means they'll die. They usually don't even focus on winning or losing the game, but instead care about disrespecting their opponent and doing cool combos. When you fight a really good player with this personality, they seem almost unstoppable, but a bad one is incredibly easy to deal with, since they're predictable if you know what they're looking for. Our 8th player is the Mind Reader, and to put it simply, they're quite the opposite of the combo video. These guys may not play the most flashy or aggressive characters, but they focus more on picking up their opponent's habits and using them against them to get hard reads. These guys are very methodical in their play and plan out their moves instead of just throwing out hitboxes. They usually have a strategy in place for every situation and are able to quickly adapt to their opponents if need be. They sort of scale in a sense, as the match goes on, they pick up their opponent's ledge and tech habits and find strategies to deal with them. So while they spend the first half of the game learning their opponent, in the later half they can absolutely destroy them. Some really good characters for a type of player like this would be Jigglypuff for Wario, since they have really good punishes that can kill someone off of one hard read or bad tech. At 9th we have the CPU Master. A lot of you have been this guy at one point, and even I was when I first started playing SF2, but the CPU Master is the guy who basically gets all of his practice from fighting CPUs. These guys are fairly good offline, but definitely struggle when they start playing online due to the input lag and connection issues, and usually have trouble playing characters such as Falco or any technical characters online. They also usually have very bad habits that CPUs won't punish, such as repeatedly using the same move or rolling a lot in neutral, and since CPUs don't punish them, they're just used to it. But in a real match, a real player may actually adapt to that and punish them for it. But since they're playing local, they can be fairly technical since they aren't limited to the connection of the match. This is a fairly common player type for a lot of people who have just started getting into SF2 and haven't played much online yet. And to finish it off at 10th, we have the Lab Monster. These players are fairly similar to the CPU Master in the case that they spend a lot of their time offline, but for these guys, it's spent mostly in the training room training away. They focus on the technical aspect of the game, hitboxes on moves, how many frames they're active for, and the mechanics of the game as a whole. They spend lots of time trying to find out new cool stuff and discovering new techniques with characters. Even I've spent a good amount of time in 9B finding cool tech back in the day, and I can definitely see the fun and appeal of it. These guys have really good knowledge in the game, and like to just break it as much as possible and find out all the cool glitches you can do. They're also very big on theory crafting and testing potential follow-ups and DI mix-ups, and we've seen what characters can truly do if they push the game to its limits. And that's about it, that's 10 types of players in SF2. Now, like I said, they are sort of stereotypes and won't apply to everyone. If there's anything you feel like I missed, then tell me in the comments below. I'd love to see what you guys think. Again, I thought this would be a fun video to make that you guys might enjoy. Anyways, thanks for watching.